Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Sounds from the Cellar, hosted by the Olive Tree Madman. Today, special guest is a friend, family member, and future correspondent of this show. Next up, Peter Guns. Come on! I'm New York to the heart, but got love for all. Lying, dying in the fire where I learned the ball. Uptown is the place where I laid my dome. On the streets of the Bronx where my family roams. God damn it, we home. Peter got a nine millimeter. And player haters could feel the flame from the heater. I never really liked to play a fool like that. But I love to succeed and see foes fall flat. Splat, or like deja vu. And I got another clip that'll blaze your crew. I sip crystal, Don P. Mo with my piss down. Just cause I'm pissy don't mean. You should miss down. Keep them in the 50s and hundreds all arranged. And anything less than that, you keep the change. I'm not filthy rich, but bitch, I'm belly broke. And blessed with flows that keep it hooked like dope. Friends call me guns, sons call me trife. I'm quick to slide off and slide this love up in your life. And that's life. Oh, you should learn how to treat her. I guarantee Peter knows how to eat her and beat her. Now, people in the Bronx call me Lex, cause I push a Lex and the rock a road Lex and the lounge on Lex. And I love sex and I wave text at sets that be. Trying to flex like Dex Brother, God rest your soul But when you mess around with guns Ain't no time to fold Now New York, New York, crazy game But out of town, brothers is all the same Brooklyn, Brooklyn, crazy loot That's because when it's beef They ain't scared to shoot Harlem, Harlem knows how to play They back to 600 getting crazy pay And people out Queens got shit on lock Strapped with the Glock running up in your spot If it wasn't for the Bronx The strap shit probably never would be going on Tell me where you're from. Uptown, baby. Yes. Uptown, baby. Yes. We get down, baby. Bullshit. For the crown, I can't baby. hear you if it wasn't for the Bronx. This rap thing probably never would be going on. Now tell me where you from. Uptown, baby. Yeah. Uptown, baby. Yeah. We get down, baby. Yeah. yeah. Yo, crown, yo, 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 yo. On the corner. What? On my eye. Nick, what the fuck you doing? I saw you at Rudy's. You were very high. You have. Oh, y'all gotta be kidding me right now. It was a crime and disgrace. They saw they took your all my face. money. Corey, where you at, man? I'm gonna need some help. Yo, Yo the RM80. Uh. Parked in the lot right next to the Mercedes. Uh. Keep the heat cock for these blocks that are shady. Crazy if you walk around thinking it's gravy. Stop me? Maybe. You living life lawless. Making big investments on an H class flawless. And hoes call us. I'm comfortable like Ring Carol. Three quarters of my life walking roads tight narrow. The thoughts which I abide by are often high. Got my mind's eye. Point sharper than an arrow. Getting high. Keep your eye on a sparrow. Riches like the Pharaoh. Bought a new five with the switches for the huh? trunk full of ammo. Huh? Keep my toes close and most dudes keep their own shadow And I'm trapped for my foes like a saddle uh, I rock stones, other niggas rock gravel You talk shit, whatever have you, I'm from Soundview Bronx uh, most wanted, uh, front get uh, confronted uh, Player we rolling uh, deep uh, in the 1.500s uh, like, like they got red, red eye Mad blunted, you step outside and get blooded Have your whole block blooded in the Bronx It's a warning, uh -huh. storm and guns out from dusk till dawn And it's on, no, no doubt. doubt Keep an eye on yo, when I'm roaming about And keep an eye on your lip, nigga Watch your mouth, I'm from the Bronx Wipe your feet when you step in my house Cause you a small time dude But a half an ounce I now I said New York, New York, crazy game But out of town, out of town is all the same Now Brooklyn, Brooklyn, crazy loot That's because when it's beef They ain't scared to shoot Harlem, Harlem knows how to play We back to 600 getting crazy pay People on Queens got shit on lock Strapped with the Glock running up in your spot But if it wasn't for the Bronx Alright, this rap thing probably never would be going on Now tell me where you from if it wasn't for the Bronx, this rap shit probably never would be going, going on. on. Now tell me where you from? Uptown, baby. Yes. Uptown, baby. Yes. yes. Down, baby. Yes. For the crown, baby. Yeah. yeah. Make some noise for my son Corey Guns. Shout out to my brother Lord Tariq. That's the tribute right there. Yeah. Uh. I forget. Uh huh. You got some call? Come on, man. <laughs> you got some? We gave him a we gave him a Tariq verse. You got a verse for him? Come on, to the front. Let me see. You got something now. We here now. Let's go. I'm what would have happened if Bishop grabbed a ledge Christopher had his legs or Manolo never hit Tony's sister Over disloyalty, you know I'd rather dead Spin at your wedding like the remix from Jagged Edge They like Corey don't have his meds I'm like, shout out to all the ops, I'm glad it's 
And whoever's on the way out, I see F him at his bed And then go on Instagram and put plant emojis at his head Since young, I've been on what the fuck I want Puff a blunt, bluff a punk, snuff a cunt, suck a punch Break a rule, shake a fool, make a move, bust a chump Where I'm from until you prove you capable is just a gun Honey bun, I'm just another one of the ones that want a one on one No one in record numbers the day you could be one and done Yo, I don't know why these niggas keep playing with son of a gun That don't bring your mother fun, motherfucker <laughs> That's it. That's it. We can go home, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, Peter Guns. Come on, man. Finally. Come on, man. I should have been the Guns. first guest. Yeah. That's right. You ain't wrong. <laughs> Y'all are only my friends and my brothers, my favorite musicians, and I got to wait. That's Just right. because people I know. Want, like take six one Grammys and people want what? Uh, yeah, had Leslie Odom on here. We, yeah. had, we had to iron out the kinks with these yeah. guys. You yeah, know? one of my favorites too. Yeah, yeah. he was incredible. He's he was amazing. the first one. Yeah, he's dope. Yeah, he I, came... used to, I used to talk to him on Instagram all the time. Yeah, yeah. And then what happened? Him. Well, yeah, the Christmas album. I wanted to come see the Christmas show, so he left. He was supposed to leave me some tickets in Baltimore. Yeah, and then he just stopped. His girl must have said, "Stay away from that motherfucker." <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. I, yo, you fucking talking to Peter Guns from Love and Hip Hop? Dead that right now. <laughs> he was like, no, I'm talking to, to yeah. Peter Guns from Cheaters. Yeah, that <laughs> Stop that too. Yeah, so he, we lost contact somewhere along the way. Oh, but yeah? Leslie, I love you. I'm not offended. I'm a fan still. I'm a fan. <laughs> he was in The Exorcist, and he has one of my favorite Christmas albums ever. ever. I didn't see that Exorcist one. We didn't talk about I don't that. Know but... about scary movies. Right. Did you watch it? Hell no. Oh no. <laughs> I don't do scary movies. I'm pussy. <laughs> I don't do them shits either. I want to see some them. shit I can't unsee. I'll yeah. watch them. No. Yeah. They yeah. messed the mood up. Yeah. Nice <laughs> little bunny over. What's the whole mood? I'm thinking about devils and demons. Yeah. No. Sometimes I can help the mood. They scared. They want to come up on you to protect me. Yeah, but I'm mentally fucked now. <laughs> right. And more than that, I'm jumping under her. I'm that dude. Right. <laughs> they shooting. You better get in front of me. <laughs> you better come on. <laughs> well, it is true. You are a friend of the band and, uh, you know. Right yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm a fan. Not just a friend. I'm a fan of yeah. all you guys, man. You know, I love y'all. Y'all inspire me uh, musically and all around the board. I, I love it. Uh, I love you guys. Y'all man. know that. And speaking of musically, and why don't you explain how you've come around this area and get to know people like Nick and Colin and myself. Because it was a time where you didn't know nothing about this environment. Yeah, you know, once I was, I want to say right before, right after the song hit, mm -hmm. I stopped, you know, I started out in music first. Music was, I was playing drums before I started rapping. You know, as a kid, I was nice on the drums. Just, that was first and foremost. So I was always searching for live music, just couldn't. It was never around, you know, uptown. We hanging out, you know, the record hit. I'm in clubs, hip hop clubs. And all Just that. to clarify for the audience that, that doesn't know, yeah. this song, the big hit is... Uptown, baby, Deja Vu. Deja Vu. Yeah. All right, yeah, go yeah. on. Yeah, so we hit, we put that song out in uh, 1998. It hit um, double platinum, Grammy nominated. Won okay. Won award award. Won a couple, you know, awards. We'll talk about the other stuff in a few, but <laughs> the song was a smash hit. We toured the world on that song, um... And just, you know, going back to music, it, uh, music, was, again, was first and foremost. When we sampled this song, I wanted to play it over. But I didn't know you guys yet. We got a spot <laughs> on. I brought people in there to play it over. It just wasn't the same. Right. And the label wanted the same sound, the same feel, the same everything. And if we couldn't recreate that, we had to clear the sample. Right. And we couldn't get it. We couldn't get it tight enough. So they was like, clear the sample or deal is off the table. So it was a million dollar deal. That song. So we had to cough up the publishing and cough up the uh and, and cough up this but we'll get back to that yeah musically i'm stumbling downtown one day just walking around and i'm hearing this club 101 on christopher street near christopher street Cr and, Barrett, yep. yeah and when you younger and from the bronx always the village had this uh you know depends on how old you are and the village had a had an image of to some people eclectic you know Jimi hendrix and all yeah that yeah in the village but as at a certain age it was i'm keeping it real it's gay what you sure. doing in the village? Right. Yo, my man, well, you, somebody said they saw you on Christopher Street. So you was like, avoided that like the plague. Mm -hmm. But I hung out with my daughter's mom in the village one day. We had food and we was walking past the 101 and I hear this guy Raj voice blaring out of there singing a Prince record. And it was live music. And I go in there and Butter's on drums and Leonard is on bass. And the rest is history. I never stopped going. Even when the 
gay rumors started flying around. <laughs> Pete loves to be in the village at the fucking <laughs> 101. I was like, y'all don't understand. Y'all make it down here. It's magical. And then the corners, I started going around and meeting the guys and, you know, the groove, oh, the village on the ground and yeah. just grew and grew and grew. And then and, uh, I developed a lot of friendships and a lot of memories, some of my best memories down here. You know? Yeah. I even got, you know, I met Amina down here. Okay. You know what I mean? So I got two beautiful daughters with Amina. Mm -hmm. And just a combination of things, you know, no matter how dark things turn out, there's always a rose at the end of it. But again, it, is, it, it inspired me. You guys inspired me musically. So I always find the music for some reason. I find yeah. the music. You know, uh, for you know me as a as a initial outsider, I came from Ireland, obviously, and you know, I, I, coming to the Big Apple, I would have had, you know, it would have been romanticized for me before I got here. But, yeah. but you know, the village, the West Village, and the scene around here, uh, it definitely kind of lived up to the romantic expectations, you know. And I wonder what that's like for like native New Yorkers. Is there like when, like you said, you discovered that vibe and you came down? Did right. you have that kind of like feeling when you came down here when you were swimming absolutely. around? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm already so to me, if you love music, right? Mm. There's certain things that musicians could do that'll fly over the average person's head. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if you're a music lover and you see somebody, you know, see you guys singing and playing, it flies over people's heads. And it, it's almost to me, it's almost like uh I, I hate it because you was if if you could be in your phone or you could just be talking or just not understand that, but you can understand some ticky tock shit do you understand what's going on up there like you know so when i bring people down they all music lovers and they get mm -hmm. it you know what i mean they never stop coming so yeah it was magical it was like wow you know i thought what i was doing on the drums or what i was doing was something you know what i mean and uh nah and, and just more than this the music the friendships that right. come from that it's a certain bond that we have as musicians yeah it's not just a friendship it's a bond a musical bond mm -hmm. you know certain people you can send music to I could never share certain music people. I know they ain't not going to get it. It's a waste of time. Right. But I know I could send you guys something that you'll get. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like certain songs that I'll be like, oh, he wouldn't understand this shit. I'm not even going to send it to him. It's too complicated for him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, and that's cool. I'm not saying all, all the time, but in my early days, I was a drummer. Knew that's what I was going to do from day one. I was beating on the sofa, the lunchbox and everything. So my mom and dad... The family was complaining, you gotta get him a drum set. He's ridiculous. He's playing garbage cans outside. He's ridiculous. <laughs> but unfortunately for me, I'm the baby boy of the family. Mm. And my older brothers were on drugs. So every many, many brothers and sisters? Yes. How, like how many? This. How many? Yeah. Five brothers, four sisters. So it would be every time, you know, two in particular, you know, was doing bad. And one in particular was just stealing everything. So every time my father bought me an instrument, it would go. Wow. Damn. So the musician that I probably could have been uh, was never going to happen because my my father said, I can't buy you nothing else. It's, you know, your brother keeps stealing you. You know, I get a new drum set, it's gone. Get a new guitar, come home to play it from school. It's not in the case, just the case is there. And it, at a, some point that just happened. But then rap came, can't steal that. So right. I started rapping, which that's why I never developed into the musician that I probably could have developed into because it wasn't until I got to Uptown Baby came out. Then I went back and started buying my own instruments, drum sets and Hello. basses and guitars and you know, but had I been playing from from younger, I think I would be amazing. And I just forgave my oldest brother, he's locked up right now. I just forgave him recently. Me and him had a talk because I was bitter. Still everything, bro. Mm -hmm. Throw my mother up the wall. Clothes, yeah. fucking food, uh, instruments. And I sat down with him and forgave him because what I thought about was. You got to look at the brighter side of this. My brother had not been an example in that apartment. My mother grabbed me one day, taking me to school with no coat on. I'm freezing because he stole a coat. And she slammed me against the wall and said, he started with weed. Then he started doing coke. And then he started, and you won't ever want to do it. And she was slamming me. You know, I don't have no coat on. It's freezing. Mm. And I think if not for that moment, because I idolized my brothers. Pretty boys, diesel, you know. And the, that made me say I'll never do nothing. And then I didn't have a drink till I was 25. I never tried Coke ever in my life. Never did anything because of that. And we have a high addiction rate in my family between my brothers and, and my sisters and my cousins. And I'm just naming that. Mm. So those years of when I when you're from the hood, you got people in the 80s that said they sold crack and I did this and I did that. I didn't have those years. Those years were terrible for me. It was a nightmare. 
my household, my mother's, my household was ravished. So when people were oh, 88, we was getting that money. I, I lived on the other side of that shit. Right. One, mm. and uh, it was bad. It was terrible, man, to watch my mother go through that. And I know a lot of, my mother just passed away two weeks yeah. ago. And I know my brother got a lot of kids. He's in jail. I know a lot of that stuff is eating him up now. But again, I love him to death. And, sure. again, and I know he has a good heart. Mm -hmm. Smartest person I know. Just that, you know, tumble when he was younger. But if not for him, I would probably, I probably would have tried everything under the sun. Mm -hmm. All my friends did. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I don't ever want to be like this dude. This thing just got my house upside down. So, but to bringing it back to the music, had I had those instruments, I'm, I might have been a better musician. But on the other side of that, I might have been on some other shit because again, my brothers, the, the house was all drugs, was full, was full of drugs, and that was it was a tough thing. Uncles, cousins, everybody. So I didn't live the good side of the drugs. I never sold drugs. You never really hear me rapping about selling drugs because right. I never was that. Yeah, got involved with guns. My yeah. cousins from the south was bringing guns up, and I started moving guns, and I got caught with a gun. And that's how and you I got the, the yeah. name. I was Pete Lover, man, with the girls. That was my rap name. <laughs> I was it. dancing. I was, you know, trying to imitate Prince, and then yeah. Big Daddy Kane. I was trying to be LL Cool J and Big Daddy Kane, right? Mainly because I felt like the streets respected them, and the, and the women respected. Yeah, them. Mm. right. Yeah, that I was a fine line that those guys could do, yes. right? It's kind yes. of incredible so, to like to be real tough and real romantic, yeah. to say or whatever, or like you know. Not romantic. It was but, a group know. called the Cold Crush Brothers. Yeah. Yeah, Cold Crush. My inspiration. I named my son Kaz after Grandmaster Kaz, the lead rapper. But I used to go to the store for him, whatever he wanted, whatever he wanted. Yeah. And even those guys was rapping about blow. Sniffing blow was cool. You know what I mean? So so even my idol, I had to go, damn, you know what I mean? I, yeah. You know, and, and me and him talk all the time. That's my guy. But the drugs was ravishing the Bronx. But when I saw the Cold Crush Brothers, I knew I wanted to rap. Okay, and that was my big inspiration rap wise is the Code Crush Four, but um, again, Big Daddy Kane and LL Cool J. I wanted to be the pretty boy dancer, but I could go at you in the streets as well. Right. So yeah, those are my items. <laughs> yeah. That's the shit. Well, well, first off, on behalf of the band and myself, we want to say our condolences for the loss of your mom. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You, right. That's a tough one. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. tough. Got to be. And I wanted to go back since we were going back. Yeah. I want to go back to Deja Vu mm -hmm. and the record company telling you that you had to clear the sample right. in order to put the record. Now you said the sample was cleared. Can you explain how that whole breakdown of the whole... Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to explain, because you you had a good point, me and you were talking about this on the phone, so let's right. bring this full circle. Right. So I used to make excuses for Steely Dan, I, but I had, I, you know, when you're young, I started shitting on them all over in Rolling Stone magazine. They, 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 they interviewed me. I would, they was like, what do you feel about Steely Dan? I was shit on if I ever see one. You know, I was, I was <laughs> ignorant, <laughs> super ignorant, but I'm sure they were robbed back in the days and just their way of trying to make up for whatever they fucking lost, but... What happened with Steely Dan, honestly, so we'll go back to the sample. We'll start there and then I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine, KNS, called me over to his house and I got this fucking record that I looped up from his group called Steely Dan. Asian now, like I told you, I love music. My brother was, that was his favorite album. My brother would do drugs and clean the house and just read. And Asian album was his favorite. He loved Peg. I already knew mm -hmm. Steely Dan from a kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? My house was full of music with my brothers. Mm -hmm. No musicians, just me. And, and my brother tried to play trumpet, but I knew the record right away when he played, he looped it up. I wrote a song to it, played it for Tariq, and Tariq was like, yo, race that second verse, I'm getting on that. Yeah. So he gets on it. I'm thinking the fucking record is just a throwaway. It's just a fun record. We throw it, you know, just a mixtape, like mm -hmm. rhyming on a mixtape, just fling it out there. And he used to be like, nah, we going to the Grammys. Tariq knew this record was a hit for some reason. He never... He, when he heard it, he was like, you don't understand what we got. And I was like, nah. The, the hook is about New York. It's about the Bronx. The hook is 16 bars. The verses are 24 bars. Everything against a, a fucking hit record. You know, hooks are short. It's the verses are too long. Sure enough, we fling it out. Starts growing legs. Mm -hmm. The city starts going crazy over the record. And then um, start getting calls. Hey, um, what y'all trying to do? Y'all trying to do a record deal? And he's like, record deal for what? This is what's going to bug you out. I started working with Shaq. So I'm writing stuff with Shaq for his album, The Entry. And he took us on tour. So we in East A we in Asia. Just on tour, just with Shaq. And I'm, it, it's, it's crazy. I could go so deep into it. I wasn't even supposed to be over there. I'm a felon. I just caught a gun charge. And Shaq wrote some letters to my probation officer. Got me out the country. I'm making money. I'm, 
And I called home and my mother said, Peter, I don't know this record, Tariq and Sean. Some song you and Sean got out, all these people keep coming to the house to try to talk to you. I said, who was there? She was like, Chris Lighty and uh, Leo Cohen is reaching out, somebody named Leo Cohen and, and Donnie Ina over at Sony. Is, they, all these people are coming to the house and calling. And I was like, Tariq, I think that record, is, you was right. You know, they, and she said they even planned it on the radio. So you were overseas when they started? Yeah, yeah I'm in China. And I got a call, it's like a 13 hour difference. I got a call at a certain hour and I'm like, yo, what the? So Tariq was like, yo, it's, it's a bidding war going on back in New York for us. So we're going to take every meeting and take the best deal. Mm -hmm. And the scope had a million, Sony had a million dollars, everybody had a million dollars. So we go up there and we's like, hey, we, this record is not a song. We just flung it out there, it's on the mixtape. And you weren't even a group. No, we weren't a group, we're solo. But it was like, well, we want y'all to be a group. So clear that sample and this is the deal. We're like, cool. So we thinking, all right, we'll go clear the sample. We got a Tim Mandelbaum, shout out to Tim Mandelbaum, the lawyer at the time. Uh, they saying some things about you, Tim. We'll talk about that in person. <laughs> <laughs> but Tim, uh, Tim reaches out to Steely Dan's lawyer, who's a shrewd dude. I don't know his name, but everybody said, good luck. He's, he is, and sure enough, he was like, you know, samples back then, you would have to pay, say, 15,000, 10,000, 5,000 plus divvy Clearance. up the, the, the right. royalties. Right. Like, all right. I mean, div divvy up the publishing and everything. There was no option with Steely Dan. It was, they want 100% of the publishing. And they want 103,000 just to clear. Unheard of. 103. What, what was the three What's for? The three? I'm about to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, Tim Mandelbaum, did you get $3,000 out of that? So, 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 for some reason, it was an odd number like that. But I, what I think happened is Steely Dan's thing was they didn't want rappers. They had already, they were already suing uh, De La Soul. De La Soul used Peg. Oh, yeah. To this day, they own 100% of whatever they, they got for uh, De La Soul. They own Peg. They own that record on Steely Dan. I mean, on Deja, oh, um, De La Soul. Yeah. So Steely Dan said, we don't like your lyrics. We would never let those lyrics go over. We don't do those. That's not our song. So it's integrity. It has nothing to do with money. Right. Except but, we'll take 103,000. Right, right. <laughs> so there, that's what bothered me. And that's what I said in Rolling Stone. There is a number that you, you would sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At some point, there is a number you would sell and you did. But so, but the problem that I had with people is people always say, oh, y'all sampled it and didn't go get it clear. That's why they sued y'all. We never got sued. Right. It was just, this is what we want if y'all want to clear the sample. So I hate when people say, why'd you throw the record out without clearing it? There was no clearing it at that time. Mm -hmm. That was just a mixtape record. Was, right. I wouldn't give them 5,000 even then. I didn't have it. Mm -hmm. It was just a throwaway record. But when it came time to clear it, and they, and you know, so, but you'll have people in high say, I'm going to never did that. What the fuck you mean? I had not, bro. I was, I had a son and a daughter at the time. I was a young father, I had nothing. And I'm going to let a million dollars go. So now 900 and something thousand. And in your mind, you're like, shit, we'll make another one. You know what I mean? So yeah. I still don't regret it to this day, but you'll have people go, oh man, you know, Steely Dan made $5 million off that song. How do you feel about that? I'm like, shit, nobody would know me if not for that song. I got to go off that. Uh -huh. And right. I can't dwell on, no. there's nothing you could do about it. Well, in, in this day and age, a lot of people seem to be able to uh, correct wrongs when it comes to things like that, and has that any come across oh, your yeah, table? Yeah, at all? I got an attorney now, and we going at them. We suing at them. We suing. We going for the lawsuit. It's not really a lawsuit. It's more of pulling on the heartstrings of 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 a judge or anybody with a with a with a right. Anybody with a heart in the right city. You talking about kid out the kids out of South Bronx? You know what I mean? Fair is fair. Give us twenty percent. Yeah, I wrote the, the the lyrics in the hook. You guys did. We sampled your, your music. You possibly made more money for them off of that song than when they originally put the song. In. Yeah, yeah, so it would be arrogant for me to say that kind of stuff. But I think we introduced Steely Dan. We definitely made that beat more popular than if people heard their song and heard our song, they're gonna go uptown beat. Well, I know Rick James said it about "Can't Touch This." It made right. more money with MC Hammer, one hundred with him, one thousand percent. But so. It get, you know, it got ugly because... Sooner or later, Vanilla Ice is going to get his props from Queen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's a funny story is once we gave them 100% of the publishing, right? Mm. And the money. I thought, all right, guys, y'all took everything. We cool. They'll let us perform at the Grammys on the MTV Awards if you guys right. will come out and do your part. Mm -hmm. It was like... They were like, absolutely. And I was like, enough is enough with these motherfuckers. You can't even come perform with us. Right. After yeah. we gave you, I own 100% of the song and I was Boy, it. a new and house, just, yeah. new car and everything. Yeah, I just took it. That was off the table. Like, I never really was feeling yeah. for that. Like, yeah. you can't give nothing back. And from my understanding, I heard Michael McDonald, 
Mm-hmm. Been like even he, he even has some things to say about them taking the whole song. Yeah. Mm. So but at the end of the day, again, I don't, I can't, bro. That's we almost sure. 25, 20 some odd years later to still be dwelling on that. It's, you got to move on. From yeah, that. absolutely. Yeah. But again, you know, shout out to Steely Dan. Uh, you know, it is what it is. They have a lot of musicians mad at them as well. Yeah. <laughs> he he came in here one night before he went down to see yeah. comedy downstairs. Donald Fagan was sitting there. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah somebody sure told do. me. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. get down here in time to smack shit out of him. Like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm sorry. He's an old man. I'm just playing. <laughs> now, rest in peace to Walter Becker and all of them. I, yeah. Again, if, uh, it, it, you know, even with what they did, it changed my life. I was in the hood and uh, I was able to see the world i made some bread and you know who knows man if not for them I, who, where i would be so i can't all the way be mad at them man you yeah. know like you know i can't and i can't just being honest with you if i could have pulled that off i can't say i wouldn't have did it i'm with a straight face they want to use it tell me give it to the fucking publisher i don't know yeah. it's always you always when you're sitting on the other side and say oh this is not right and that's not right i i don't know man i, I might have fucking i can that. understand taking a lion share but yeah Oh. You just never know. You never know. You never right. know until in that position. They probably didn't be, been stuck up and robbed and all type of shit. I don't know. I'm not making excuses for them. Mm. But at this day and time, it's time to relinquish some of that back. And that's why I'm going to. I'm, I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to do it the right way by by just reaching directly and they haven't responded. So now I had to get lawyers involved. Like, don't you think it would be? Let's not go all. Don't you think it'd be nice to revert something back? You guys made millions, man. You yeah. know what I mean. So yeah, so I'm not. I'm still not in position to not. I miss that. I, I could use that. You well, know, some, some of it. Yeah. When I hear people, I get calls and they say, "I just heard your song at HBO." I'm like, "Like I know you get the check." No, I'm not. I just did your song in karaoke. Wow. I don't get none of that shit. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. So you know, um, every now and then. But now nah, I just yeah. I keep pushing, bro. I think if you, if you, my advice to anybody, if um. And this is something nobody told me. This is how I live. I live life on, y'all know, yeah, as my friends, you guys know, I live life on the edge. I don't yeah. dwell on nothing. But this right. thing with my mother, yeah, uh, some brothers, it's been the hardest thing I've had to deal with in my life. And I can't even sleep at night. It's really, I, I'm getting emotional yeah. illiterately as I talk about it. Yeah. But other than that, I don't dwell on shit, man. I, yeah. don't, I can't even stay mad at nobody. I just think life is too short. And if I did, if I ever took time to go, damn, this is my reality. I'm gonna get into a depression. I got right. a lot of kids to take care of. I got yeah. bills. I got. I can't. Yeah. I gotta stay upbeat. I, yeah. I live in Disneyland every day yeah. of my life. Right. You know, it's, it's it, dangerous. I'm yeah. not I'm advising nobody to do it. It worked for me my whole life. I just don't sweat nothing. But brother calls me Barack Obama. He said, you just cool with everybody. <laughs> I am. Right. I refuse, man. Well, I you refuse. know, it's, 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 you know, it's been a pleasure getting to know you over the years. And you've always been that, pl- that pleasant fella. Um, and you know, you're like, you're not a, you've cracked a, a good few eggs to make this beautiful omelet <laughs> that is Peter Gunn's these days, you know, but it is amazing. Yeah. You, you, you do kind of like always yeah. stay pretty buoyant, but it's never ignorant. Like I've always known you to kind of like, uh, to ad- to readily admit fault and go, yeah, that was, you know. Yeah, terrible, but yeah. but but you do it in a way that I think is really uh, healthy that like when, sometimes when I've been racked by my own misdeeds or whatever, it, it weighs you down and you go, well, this isn't really, n- nothing is getting repaired or improved by this kind of thing. Whereas right. I look at what you, the way you are, you admit the whole scenario, but you don't get dragged down by it. And it's it kind of it amazing. Would, it would, it would, let me tell you again, you'll go into a depression. I've mm. always been, ter- I've never been faithful in any relationship I've right. ever been in. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a- I am a, I, so if you want to have the most fun in your life with somebody, I might be that guy for you. But if you weren't saying this is the guy I want to marry and have kids with, I'm, I'm probably not. But I'm a lot of fun. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, so people be like, why do these girls, why would you, these women even, you have to be around me to understand. Mm-hmm. I, I'm what fun. is it? I'm, so what is talk it? About I'm, it no, man, I'm all fun. <laughs> so, I don't, again, right. not sweating. Is, yo, women love that. You don't sweat. I don't sweat. Yo, bro, right. I don't sweat nothing. I don't know what it is. I used to, I used to sweat some, some things. I don't sweat nothing. And I read this book called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. And that helped me a lot too in terms of somebody cuts me off. I'm going to chase them down and argue with them. I've done that before. I've got dude flick the fucking cigarette out of his motorcycle. Sh- I mean, out of his car, hit me in my helmet on my motorcycle. He did it again. I said, I am going to kill this motherfucker. I got my gun and the, the, the thing on my bike. We on a Bronx, cross Bronx Expressway. I chase him all the way till he gets to damn near Connecticut. Pulls over in the gas station, gets out of his car. 
I go grab the thing out the back, and he's high-fiving me. We killed it. He thought we were racist. <laughs> right. So something that small could have put me in jail for the rest of my life. This dude had no gut. And I was like, bro, you just keep saying, oh, no, I was just doing... He said, you coming to... He thought we were racing. So that's when I said, you know, you got to pull back on the fucking anger yeah. and sweating. Yeah. I don't sweat nothing, bro. I used to get pissed. I leave my keys upstairs, get all the way to my car. Yeah. I just go back up and get them. Right. Yeah. No more kicking the fucking car. Like, fuck. I don't, bro. Life is too short. It's it's too, I don't sweat. I don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. It's a really important thing for like some real big boy shit. Like later on in life is how quickly you leave what's done is done. It's gone. Moved Absolutely. on. You can't be just like sitting there going, having a party of whatever feelings it is. Like, you know, this Absolutely. is just like, okay, when is the actual thing, next thing happening? You know? there, there's always Achilles heel or something, right? So yeah. alcohol, I'm a month on, month off. Mm -hmm. Music, if I say I'm going to learn the song and play it, I could do it. Mm -hmm. The only thing I ever struggled with was women. I right. could never do right. I'm faithful to know. I'm keeping it apart. Yeah. I've always had a problem with that and, and, and I still struggle with it. You know what I mean? It's not easy. That's it. Other than that, and yeah. I know that's a big deal, you know what I mean? Did it, was there ever a pair? <laughs> yeah, other than that. <laughs> was there ever uh was there ever like a point in your career in the in the relationship career where you were like you were like, really, I gotta figure this out? Or were you always don't switch now. the small stuff? Oh now. No, now. Now. Yeah, there was a time, you know, listen, you would go through these phases where you're like, oh, damn, this is terrible. Right. You know, because babies are involved. You know yeah. what I mean? And then I'm friends. I give so mm. here, here's a great example. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. <clears throat> Love and hip hop call. Yeah. I'm flat broke. I have no nothing. I'm I have nothing when it's struggling. In my mind, Amina could be exposed to the world for how talented she is, beautiful she is, and what she does. Tara could go and show the world her acting, how beautiful and intelligent she is. And then I could get some money and provide for these many children that I have to provide for and show them what I do. It was no malice in me going to do Love and Hip Hop. Zero malice. It had no malice. But once you start doing it, you're dealing with people that that's what this show is about. And I'm not blaming nobody. I know what the show is about. You're thinking you can navigate it. But if you're not in charge of the editing, in charge of the storylines right. like that, you don't have no fucking, you know, they'll film some shit for you just to film it and you'll never see that shit on TV just to pacify you. Hey, could we show that I'm trying to get yeah. guns off the street, guns against guns? Could they show I'm going to the kids in, in right. jail and doing this and that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll film it and you'll never see that shit. All you see is Peter Gunn running around cheating in line and two women. Then you got to remember some of the... I used to always say, y'all can't help me be an asshole. I'm already... The world hates me already. I don't need no help. <laughs> so you take... So I'm going to give you an example. You take something simple as... Let's say we sitting here and we talking about... Say Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And you bring up Trump and I make a Trump a face like, oh. Yeah. We have another conversation. Butter says, I'm working on a new album. Yeah. And I, that's dope. They're going to take the Trump face uh -huh. and put it to the, yo, I'm working on a new album. Mm. <laughs> right. So I would be home like, what the fuck? That's not what I did. So, right. but other than that, can't make up babies. Can't make them. I'm not making excuses. That what you saw was what you saw. And I would never regret it because, you know, some, again, some, some beautiful children came out of it, some good relationships. But I also understand that their mothers and fathers had to watch that. So right. some Tara's father who had a relationship with his, he don't even speak to me no more. Mm. Tara didn't know Amina and I got married. She learned that on TV. That's fucked up. I would have killed her for that. She did that to me. Um, these are just things that you just can't come back from. And then let's just, that's just family stuff. My sister got to go to work. My daughter's fighting in school because people saying your father's a fucking prick. You guys, let's go all the way down to you guys. He's really a nice guy if you get to know him. I wasn't thinking about none of that. I was only thinking about, hey, we're going to figure this shit out. We're going to get some money. I wasn't thinking about all the shit that, that everybody else had to endure. I was only thinking about myself at the time. And that's something that, you know, that's in the top. I have, think, I have, I have things that I regret in life, and that probably would be either number two or three. My first thing would be not taking care of my mother and father first before I took care of myself. I got myself out the hood and got myself a car, and I should have did that mm. for my father first, and I didn't. And, those are things that for the rest of my life that I, I'll probably, you know, die regret. Mm. Eventually I got them, but I didn't do it out the gate. And, uh, you know, those things I'll always regret. I yeah. took care of me first. I, I got to get out of here. I right. can't be on this block no more. Nah, you, you get your parents out first. And I didn't do that. And I'll, I'll, I'll regret that for the rest of my life. Is, it, is your mom passing now? Is that what's bringing everything into sharp focus? I feel like 
I wasn't focused enough to take your time. I feel like if I was a little more focused, I could have did change things a little more for you know. Yeah. You know, like I know, you know, not bragging, I know I'm talented enough to change to to have changed time by and I didn't I wasn't focused running around with women and and uh just not doing what I should have did. Could have I you know, I could have did a little more for her, uh it's self-regret. You know, a lot of my brothers in them won't let me have that regret because they're like, you did what you were supposed to do. But I feel like if I was a little more focused, she could have she could have went out a little better. Mm -hmm. I always regret that, you know. And again, not uh, getting them straight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. But that's life, man. You can't, again, you can't, you can't fucking, uh, you know, it's new, so I'm still emotional about it. So I apologize. Yeah, yeah no, no, that's no so apology good, needed. It's Ain't new. Anybody going to be like that about their mom. Yes, no. So, yes, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's hard to sleep. Yeah. 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 You, yeah. Well, music always makes you feel better, right? Yeah. You know, music takes me, it depends, you know, like, it depends. Like, some Sam Cooke came on uh, and, I, you know, I break down or some old doo-wop. My mother, I grew up on 50s music with my parents. They like doo-wop music, so it depends on what I listen to. So I got to make sure... It's the right music to take me where I need to be. But music, that music sets my mood. Well, I think music and you performing the music it should help you feel in a better mood. Oh, yeah. I you think we should do that right now. That would yeah. be a good time to play a song. Yeah, let's go. Okay? One, two, three, pull up. One of these nights. One of these crazy old nights. Gonna find out pretty mama. Turns on the night mm -hmm. One of these nights One of these crazy old nights Gonna find out pretty mamba Turns on the night yeah. Middle of the ocean, lying on the float Jumped in the chopper, landed on the boat Laying in the pool with a couple of bras, a couple cigars, a DJ, Lenny Kravitz playing guitar. Bar full of top shelf liquor. Celebrate the birthday of me and my nigga. Figure, clouds are blowing, the stars are showing. They knowing that we going to the moon on the Boeing. Owen, just grab a shit. Magic Africa dab a shit. Disappear, make a kneel like Kaepernick. Pocket watches, the watches are tick tocking. Hopping the chopper popper, head in the helicopter. I'm a grown man acting like a boy. $50 million boat to me is just a toy. Her man keeps blowing up her phone. She's working for the Dolphins. Leave her alone oh. Now I'm stepping in the pool Peter Pepper kept it cool She repping the fool I'm repping my crew Keep calling I'm a banger on the rap Send her on the way To a little pain in the ass Dog I gotta stop Drinking that dark Now I'm in the ocean Swimming with the sharks Back on the boat With the facade of a champion Park in the Bronx Now we park in the Hamptons One of these nights Yeah One of these crazy old nights Let's go Mike Gonna find out, pretty mama. Say what? Turns down the night. Uh, yeah. One of these nights. Woo. Yeah. One, One of these, these crazy old nights. Hell yeah. Gonna find out, pretty mama. Uh. Turns down the night. Come on. Hey. Listen. Damn it, it comes the hot stepper when the dude gets salty. I just sprinkle with the pepper like bang, boogie, dee, bang, dee, bang. You know we tight cause this girl on my dang a lang. Now how a man 50 something, buddy, keep the kitty jumping. Peter, Peter, the pumpkin eater, the bitty party pumper like 10 years of saying a lot. I pop a blue boy, you, she's changing One the lot. I seen a man get evicted cause the dick is addictive and dick, she hit you back to back. She hit you with the who want a divorce, who calling it off, who taking the loss, I'm taking it all. Quarantine 10 months, I hate this chick. I try to get a fat nigga to take this chick. But two shades, double two, she hates you too. She try to get a fat chick to take you too. Ooh. One of these nights, yeah. One of these crazy old nights. Say what? Say what? Gonna find out, pretty mama. Uh. Turns on the night. One more time. One yeah. more time. I'm ready 
ready to go home. Turns on the night. I'm sleepy, I'm ready to go home. I had a couple questions for you. Yeah, come on. Man. All right. Well, I I just want to I want to know what you think has changed most in the hip hop world from say the '90s to today. Anybody, I think with that question, I think that anybody thinks they can do it. Right. Mm. Um. You know, that's the that's the problem. They're not respecting the the the, and they don't have to because you if you you'll have a rapper somewhere that does a song that's like. Uh, you know, I don't, damn, I hate that. I don't want to say this because it's going to throw somebody in the bus. I don't want to start no shit. But let's say somebody out here goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You know, mm-hmm. fucking in the ass in the bin, two, three. <laughs> you and make millions and millions of dollars on TikTok or whatever. Now you like, if he could do it, I could do it. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? So when I go to, even when I go in my own hood, I got people coming up to me saying, Pete, I just started working on my album. It's crazy. I'm like, bro, I knew you for... I'm 55 now. You got to be my age when you, yeah, I'm rapping now. And this shit is just like, it, it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, I talk to a lot of comedians here at the cellar and it's almost like somebody decided to do comedy mm. all of a sudden. I'm not saying that you can't rap, you know what I mean? That you should, I, I just, I just can't respect it when the art is just, just. I think some people have treated it like a lottery ticket. Yeah. I think that back then we had, you know, we had Karis One, we had LL like Cool J, real, De La real, Soul, Slick right. Rick, Storytelling, Public Enemy on the Real mm-hmm. Stuff. So we had a diverse and you respected it. Now it's mm-hmm. like, and I get mad, you know, I, I I I hate to sound like the old angry guy that had his turn and and he don't know how to let the new people live. When it's, when it's J. Cole or it's Kendrick Lamar or, you know, certain rappers, even the Migos. I'm, I wasn't mad at the Migos. Mm-hmm. I understood people started here, they're mumbling, nah, listen to them. And it has skill. Mm-hmm. It's certain rappers that I, I respect, but then there's others that I go, this is crazy. And the and the uh, drill music is very disturbing to me. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, we rapped about killing and stuff like that, but we just, you know, I, we just rapping. These dudes are actually talking about somebody they really killed and they smoking him into the air. And these people are playing it and they're superstars and it's like, it almost encourages other people. I mean, I killed you and I rapped about it. And I'm, you know, the drill music, I just, I could never get with that. Mm. It's disturbing to me. Mm. And they get mad at me all the time because I'm, I'm very vocal about that because 15, 16 year old kids, you smoking them up in a thing get as high as they are. That, that shit sounds crazy to me. I hate it. It's crazy. Yeah, so I've came so certain. So back then, again, you know, the answer to your question is it was just more diverse stuff. It was more, it was, you know, intellectual. If you want mm-hmm. to hear stories, you know, it was there. Now it's like, what, what the fuck are y'all talking about? And what do you think caused that? Is it technology or is it just the culture changed? Oh, uh, you know, it's a combination. Um, definitely culture change, but I think if people are not held, held accountable to be talented, the radio is going to play it and, mm-hmm. and the Instagram and TikTok and they're going to show it. You know, what's, who am I to tell this, this kid that's trying to rap, nah, you need to do this. Mm-hmm. Cause I always tell them to be different. Try this, try these skills. And they see somebody doing, I'm watching kids literally dumb down their talent to, to make it. Like you're that's really talented, but you see your eyes sounding ignorant and stupid and untalented mm-hmm. that's so that you can make it and that's what's going on. But I'm mostly trying to encourage kids to play instruments again. Mm-hmm. Yo, well, all right, if you're going to do that, do that with a guitar, do that with a, do that on the drums, do that on the piano. You know what I mean? Do something they're not doing. I'm really trying to uh, encourage kids. Like I have some kids on my block. I'm like, won't y'all make a roots, make right. a roots. You know, Roots is all booked up. They need another Roots. Right. They booked up. Get you a, make you a Roots. Right. What are y'all doing? And they, they not listen. You know what I mean? I guess it's not cool to hold a guitar in your hand. It's not cool to play the piano. And that's disturbing to me. I idolize musicians. I was a Prince fan from a kid. Before Purple Rain and all that, I was already mm-hmm. loving Prince just because I saw him playing multiple instruments. Not the aesthetic. My father used to be like, oh, I'm worried about you. 
Right. You like that guy with the heels <laughs> and the tights on the balloon. You know, you know, a father from the, you know, in those days, I was like, what's going on with Peter? I'm concerned. And, like, and then he started going to the village and he was like, I'm the, really concerned. Yeah. Really, <laughs> listen, do you ever see Prince down here? No, I um I didn't get to see Prince till I was older. When I was like in Prince in in like 80, 79, 80, I was a kid. Right. So I was baby. But uh so I was not able to go see him. In fact, I was don't even listen to that shit. He's talking about head and all type right. of but as I got older, I would, you know, I've traveled to see Prince. I've, you know, Shaq took me to meet Prince a couple of times. I wouldn't go meet him. I didn't meet uh, Prince until Butter called and said, Shelby is bringing Prince to the Village Underground. Your man going to be there. And I'm in front of the Village Underground. And I, I never wanted to meet him because I never wanted to change. I was somebody I love my whole life. And then mm -hmm. Shelby grabbed me and said, P, this is my brother, Peter. And he came and shook my hand. She introduced me to Prince as her brother, and I shout out to Shelby J. I'll never forget that. And he mm. gave he gave me a pound and walked right in. Mm. Yeah. So I want to ask you about the sample that everyone knows. I mean, the whole world knows that, especially from the Shakira song. Obviously, right. did they get the idea to sample that from your song? Absolutely. 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 Clef won't admit that. I saw Clef recently. He was like, Guns, I, I saw you do an interview where you said you inspired that. Nah, I've been on that Jerry Beard. Nah, bro, you in the video. If yeah. the intro to the Uptown Baby uh, video, that's why I Clef. I love Clef. You know I love you. He's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, no, nah, I don't believe you, homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely got that shit from us. Get the fuck out of here with that. Um, uh, Jerry Rivera, I'm in this young lady's house. Now, you got to remember, Uptown Baby started, I'm New York to the heart. And I was like, that's just too, how's a DJ going to catch? That's too abrupt. And this song needs something. We playing Uno. I'm in the Bronx playing Uno at this chick. Shout out to Keisha Rivera. I love you, Keisha. I don't care. Tell your husband, live with it. <laughs> <laughs> and she was playing some Spanish music, you know, Puerto Rican girl out the Bronx. And, mm -hmm. it, and that shit came on. I said, can I borrow that CD? And she said, sure. And I took those horns and put it on top of the song. Mm. We had to replay them, though. Those horns are public domain, mm -hmm. but we couldn't use Jerry Rivera. So that's why you hear the difference in the single we put out on our own. Because mm -hmm. the, there was no, no more publishing left to give out. No right, more right. money. to get, So we had to go bring a horn section in to play it over. It wasn't as big and loud. But you a horn, come when you play horn. So... Mm -hmm. The original horns that's bright and loud like that, somebody mm -hmm. told me those were keyboard horns. Oh, wow. The ones on our album are real horns. We okay. bought a real horn section and I didn't like it because it was, it they didn't record it right. It sounded like it was in a big room and okay. just mm -hmm. light. Those other horns are, <laughs> you know, blatant. Right. And those are horns I use for my show, okay. the original. Mm. Yeah, well, the way they used to record the, the those horns on those salsa records in yeah. the 60s and 70s, they would have small horns and they would play triple forte and that's how they got that sound. Uh, and people don't do that as much anymore. Everyone got bigger horns nowadays. So it's harder to get that. Like yeah. those Hector Laveau records, how Willie Colon played the right. trombone, like it's just in your face and it's edgy. That's what it was. People don't Chris. really play that anymore. But somebody told me it was probably a keyboard, but you would know that. been We're going to listen and yeah, check yeah, it out. Yeah. But Because it's Jerry Rivera. I don't know what year that was, but I will say this. It's bright sound big yes. and that's why I used them right but then the, there was no money left over for publishing to mm. give anybody so we had to go find some horns to come in and play I recently gotcha. ran into a guy in the club I'm sorry I don't know your name he said Guns I play trumpet on the intro to your song y'all pay this union scale I was like bro was, you lucky you got that <laughs> there's no <laughs> money left for the fucking song and um yeah so that's the story in Clef you know I saw Clef didn't tell me that I saw an interview where they asked him, what you just asked me? He was like, no, I got that from Jerry Rivera. I've been fuck out of here. <laughs> nah, Clef, I refuse. You ain't going, you my man, I love you to death. Get out of here. You got that shit. That idea came from me. And in fact, if I'm being honest, you flattered a little bit. But on the other side of that, you're like, damn, man, you could have shouted me out. But he he didn't do that. But I saw uh, me and Clef's Jerry Wonder, his bass players, that's my guy. And they used the original. So mm -hmm. they paid a lot of publishing to Jerry Rivera. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why did y'all, y'all didn't learn from us. You should just play the shit over. It was public mm -hmm. domain. He was like, I know. So they used the original horns that we originally used instead of playing it over. So they gave up a lot of publishing on that song. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you still at it. And you still in the game. 
you working on a new project now? Yeah, a couple of new things. Me and CL Smooth got an album out called The Odd Couple. Well, it's not out. It'll be out soon. It's The Odd Couple. It's an EP we just finished up. Um, I'm, I'm uh, you know, getting ready to do something with my son. Corey doing his thing, so I'm going to do something with Corey. I'm looking forward to that father-son combination. Man, and, uh, you know, um, also, also, uh, I want to do a live, live album, like, you know, music, a musical album, all mm -hmm. original stuff. Mm. Let's go. All live. Yeah. Let's do it. Come on. Why wouldn't Let's I? I got go. friends like y'all. And you'll be playing some instruments on this. Ab absolutely. Go back to the instrument playing and stuff like that. Try to get good enough not to look at the strings while I'm playing, you know? Hey, man, I still be looking sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you got to just check, make sure they're still there. Yeah. So, yeah, do that and stuff. You know, just get to that point. Yeah. Just Any more television? Yeah. Listen, I don't, I, you know, as long as now I can't, you know, I got older kids i got grandkids now so now i can't be on there running around like i used to it gotta make sense if it's true you know i live with it but yeah I'm, I'm more picky about the things i do now i already got a lot of stuff that makes me cringe that i did on tv when i watch and that's gonna live here forever so i gotta i gotta be careful what i do moving forward but yeah i'm working on the tv show called graves in i did a couple little uh appearances and some you know independent films that's coming out so i'm looking forward to I'm always, you know, it's all a part of the thing, the crap. Acting, it's all, I'm, I wanted to be an entertainer from the time I can remember. Mm -hmm. My mother and I knew that. And they always pushed me in that direction. They knew I wanted, I knew what I wanted to do from a kid. Entertain. Mm -hmm. That was, that's, you know how some kids try to figure it out? Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to entertain. And I always wanted to play yeah. whatever instrument you handed me. I wanted to learn how to play it. No matter what it was, it could be a violin. I was, I was always instrument. But again, them shits was getting stolen. The school instruments was even getting stolen. Cold. Niggas, my nigga Ray was stealing horns and shit. Nah, I love you, Ray. It's my big brother. Cold blooded. <laughs> nah, the drugs is a fucked up thing, man. It's, sometimes you can't never get. It's hard, man. You know, and I watch people struggle with it, and that was my. You know, that's my. I still love him to death. Again, if it wasn't for him, who knows where I would. Be. Well, tell us this last thing about your Guns Against Guns program. Yeah, guns what against guns. That's that's something that I do. It's not all the way against guns. That's that's harsh because I'm not against guns. Mm. I think if, if 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 the average thug or or whatever you want to call them or a bad guy can have a gun, you need to have one to protect you and your family. I just I just urge uh, people to do it the right way. Go go about it. Learn gun safety so you're not out here shooting the wrong person. And then um, if you out here carrying illegal, you need to know what's going to happen. I'm a victim of it. Um, I'll carry an illegal firearm with the jail. So okay. you really don't want those statistics are real. If you're carrying a gun illegally, you're more likely to get killed by it than kill somebody. Uh, um, you, the, the statistics of when you get to jail, how you don't come out the same, you're never the same. The, uh, the, you get slashed. The amount of violence on in jail, the the, the amount of uh, diseases in jail is more than outside in the city. So it's a lot of little things that you... When I talk to the kids, I don't tell them the dangers of guns because that's corny. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know guns kill, you can get killed. We know that. How about this? When you get to Rikers Island, you got to strip down in front of your friends, butt naked, and they got to look in your ass. You got to part your ass open so they can see if nothing's there in front of your friends, ladies and everything. Then you got to take showers with men. That's the shit that make the kids go, oh, <laughs> right. Not the um, guns kill and this and that. Yeah, we know guns kill. But how about this? When this mm. big diesel motherfucker that just killed everybody in his house is next to you and you got to strip neck in front of him and take a shot. Remember that. Right. So I, I, so guns against guns, I would go around and just talk to kids. I'll go to Rikers Island and talk to kids and just try to tell them the dangers and, and uh, the dangers of what happens to them in jail and just... How it's set up for you. It's three to nine. Three to nine. First offense. Nothing to talk about. Damn. Nothing. You're going to jail. It's no, back in the days, I got probation. I went in, bailed out, got probation. Now, now nah, you got to go sit down. Right. Nothing to talk about. First offense. You just thought it was cool to carry a gun. Now you're in there with the real criminals. The ones that's really about that life. So think about it. That's all. That's what guns are guns. Wow. Mm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Peter... It's been a pleasure having you today, I love man. You, man. Y'all family, so. Peter Guns, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three, come on. When you were mine, I gave you all of my money. 
time after time You done me so wrong It was just like a train You let all my friends come over and eat You were so strange You didn't have the decency to change the sheets Oh honey, when you were mine I used to let you wear all my clothes You were so fine Maybe that's the reason that it hurt me So I know that you're going with another guy I don't care Cause I love you baby, that's no lie, no lie I love you more than I did when you were mine When you were mine You kinda saw that was my best friend And so I was blind I let you fuck around I didn't care I never was the type to make a fuss When you were there Sleeping in between the two of us I know, I know that you're going with another guy I don't care, don't care Cause I love you baby, that's no lie, no lie I love, love you more than I did when you were mine When you were mine you were all I ever wanted to do Now I spend my time Following him whenever he's with you I know that you're going with another guy I don't care Cause I love you baby, that's no lie, no lie I love you more than I did when you were mine I love you more than I did when you were mine I love you more than I did when you were mine I love you more than I did when you were mine I love you more than I did when you were mine